Welcome to a special virtual visit to the Komori Graphic Center in Rolling Meadows, Illinois, where we'll be advancing the press room in 2021. Thank you for joining us. I'm Amy McWhorter, and today we have some exciting things to show you and some very interesting people to meet. But first, let me say good riddance to 2020 and welcome to a brighter 2021. And today, my friends at Komori will be telling you why it will be a brighter year. Now, if you've been to the Graphic Center before, welcome back. If you've never been to this impressive facility, call us to schedule a visit once we can all get out again. Of course, we'd prefer to see you in person, but clearly that's not a wise choice right now. But we know things will be better soon. And even in these difficult times, Komori will remain connected with you. Now, here's what we have in store for you today. First, we'll have a greeting from Mr. Kubatera, president of Komori America. Then we'll get a product update from director of product management, Doug Shard, followed by two top execs from MBO America and Komori America talking about the new partnership. And we'll wrap up with some news from executive VP of sales and service, Mark Milborn. Now, before we get started, just a couple of business items. If you have questions about any of the products, services, or programs that are mentioned today, or would like more information, you can submit a question via the link below. Komori staff is standing by to respond to your questions. Next, in our program today, you'll see or hear the answer to a question that could win you a very nice prize. Ever heard of Zoom fatigue? Well, we have the solution. We're going to bribe you. The first five attendees to respond by email will be the winners. The email address is shown on the screen. Now, here to welcome us to the Komori Graphic Center is Mr. Toshiyasu Kubatera, President of Komori America Corporation. Mr. Kubatera. Thank you, Amy. And I, too, would like to extend a warm welcome to Komori America's Graphic Technology Center and our virtual webinar, Advancing the Press Room in 2021. Komori is embracing 2021 with a new sense of optimism and purpose. No looking back, in fact, Komori is marching towards its 100th anniversary. In 2023, we will be celebrating our centennial year. So our optimism is not only rooted in the strong foundation of Komori Corporation, but in the continuing advancement we are making in offset and digital printing technology. In fact, today, you will be hearing about the latest line of sheet fed presses. We are calling the advanced model. This new press platform demonstrates our commitment to streamlining the production process and ensuring your business stays vital and profitable. In addition, we want to provide you an update on commodity success and future direction, as well as an update on MBO and commodities collaboration, as we meld these two dynamic companies into one. On personal note, as President of Commodity America, I have the distinct pleasure to work and lead the great sales and service team and people within this organization. I now have been stateside for over six months, and my only regret is I have been unable to engage with you, our customers. As we move closer to closure on the pandemic, I'll make it my priority to visit, to listen, to run, and develop a stronger partnership with you. I look forward to seeing you soon. Hi, everybody out there in Komori land. It's Gina Danner and I hope all is well. I wanted to give a shout out to all of our great friends and partners at Komori and the great service you provide to uh, Next Page. We love running our two eight color presses day in and day out. And we certainly look forward to a awesome 2021. Hi to my friends at Komori. Equipment we use at Classic has been Komori from the beginning. Uh, we had evaluated a lot of the other uh, press manufacturers, and we found Komori to be very personal. I mean, really trying to understand our business, 
what our purpose was and creating machines to fit our clients, opposed to just trying to sell us press. At Komori, we're constantly refining our solutions to help you streamline your production process, connecting the dots so you don't have to. We let you focus on printing, doing more with less. A person with years of experience in all of that and a significant perspective on the entire industry is Komori Director of Product Management, Doug Shard. Thank you so much for joining us today, Doug. Thanks, Amy. It's great to see you too. For decades, Komori has been known for their innovation in the printing industry. So to start with, what's the latest new technology from Komori? Well, Komori has some awesome new technology, but it's not one single thing, it's many things. We continue to advance on the press side. As a matter of fact, we're introducing the GL Ed Advanced series, and it's gonna be available both on the GL and the GLX series. Um, and the Advanced really defines a direction for Komori. There's, there's some better sheet handling control on press for problem stocks or very lightweight stocks, things that are traditionally hard to feed and deliver. Um, but it, it also encompasses things like compressed make ready time by using parallel functions where um, many make ready functions are happening at the same time. Overall, much, much shorter make ready. We have a super efficient uh, pre-inking program called KHSAI with some advanced light coverage controls on it. Um, we've got electronic vision that not only is checking defects, but it's controlling color while you run on every sheet and it's doing register and it can even automatically put the job on count when certain criteria have been met. You know, the, the, the breadth of Komori technology is, is pretty broad. But that's just on the press. We can also leverage things like the internet of things and use the power of software and computing and connections to not only let management see job transparently through the plant, but we can have machines talk to machines. And we use a, a piece of software called KP Connect for that, which is a cloud-based software where that can go up and collect data and actually um, give you that data back in some easy to understand uh, graphical displays as well as numerical displays so you know exactly how things are, are running through your plant um, with some precision and as soon as you know that you can get your cost down. What advantages will Komori customers see with this technology? Well the, the advantages are, are pretty broad. Um, one is you can pick the technology that suits your needs in particular. You don't need to get everything you can get exactly what will help your shop the most. But really the over, overarching message on everything is, is streamlining workflow, trying to address the labor shortage that everybody's experiencing right now, and cutting out inefficient costs. You know, because inefficiency and costs kind of go hand in hand in my view. You know, the more inefficient you are, the higher your costs are gonna be. So the better we can reduce costs, you get more efficient, and at the same time, by increasing efficiency, you reduce costs. But with re respect to the benefits that a customer will get from this, you know, it's really addressing the pain points in a shop. You know, workflow is pretty important today. You know, processing a job from the feeder to the delivery has always been important, and we keep advancing on that. In fact, there's a lot of features here to do exactly that. But even more than that, we have to start looking at automation of the workflow through the plant the beginnings of that, the, the using the internet of things to start connecting equipment up to give management kind of a transparent vision through their whole plan of where jobs are and what's the process. And if there's a bottleneck, you know, it can be addressed quickly because you can see it. You know, the computers are powerful, software is powerful, but so are people. But people can't be everywhere, software can. It, it, it's there on the machines all the time. So as machine speeds are going up to 18,000, we're using electronic vision to check every sheet for defects, to manage color on, while you're running. I mean, it's, it, it's better than a person can do, in all honesty. So transitioning um, from what was historically a pretty manual event, now is going into a more, much more technological event and the features of the advanced press and what Komori's offering, every step of the way there's a, a helping hand that comes into it from even just making sure what you print is correct. And I don't mean while you're printing it, but before you print it. A PDF comparison, for example, where we're checking what you're gonna print compared to what you're 
client really wants you to print to make sure nothing dropped off in pre-press or plate got scratched or anything like that. Even down to that level, all of the technology is there with Komori to help streamline that whole workflow. And that is gonna probably put more money into the, the account at every month than anything. Interesting. Now, from your perspective, what issues do you see in the market today and how is Komori addressing these issues? Well, solving today's problems in a, in a print market um, you know, can take a lot of different avenues and Komori is really kind of addressing all of them. One of the things is you'll see a lot more nuanced machine configurations like a 37 inch or a reverse printer. Another thing you'll see is you know, highly leveraged use of software and uh, the internet of things and um, connected automation, things like that. But even more than that, you see Komori starting to reach out to with the purchase of MBO, where we can now start linking our technology with uh, bindery equipment to really make a workflow flow through the plant as efficiently as possible. I suppose it goes without saying that speed of operation is very important for productivity. What strides has Komori made in that area? Well, speed of operation is a critical part of any printer. You know, printing is, is manufacturing, and the faster you can get products out, the, the better off you are. In, and, and over a lot of uh, uh, areas, you know, g good business doesn't change, and good business um, the elements are the same today as they were 20 years ago. You know, it's, it's get your costs down, get your profits up, um, do good work. You know, so speed is, has to fall under that umbrella of, of those three things. So by going faster, obviously your costs go down because the job's in your plant less. Um, going faster also generally increases profitability because again, it's in your plant less. The more you can get out, the greater your billing is, the, the more jobs you produce in a year. You know, it's just overall, it's, it's good common sense in business. Um, but Komori looks at it not anymore just strictly on press, but they look at it through an entire plant. How do we speed up the workflow that from jobs that literally come in the door to when they go out the door? Now, some of it, granted, we don't have a huge impact on, but we can track where jobs are. We can, we can help that. Um, we have great pieces of software that can help watch electronically jobs as they flow through the plant and where they are at any given stage so that the, the essence of speed can be maintained you know, from day to day, job to job, month to month, you know, the, the whole range on that. Okay. That's good news. How about packaging? Is that an important field for Komori customers? Uh, packaging is an incredibly important area for, for Komori. You know, it's, a, it's an area of expanded growth. More and more printers are getting into packaging because the economy requires more packaging these days. So of course our equipment has to be designed to give a, a high degree of advantage to package applications. And that means, you know, thick stock going in and coming out of the press, so stock handling is always important. And even how the sheet is handled in the press. For example, we have a reverse printing press, a GLX uh, RP, as we, we phrase it RP, but it's really a reverse printer. It it's also falls under the advanced series press. And it's a press that can print on both sides of the sheet without flipping the sheet. And just that alone negates the, the worry of a, a gripper margin at the tail. You, you don't need that anymore, so you can run smaller sheets. You don't have to worry about back trimming stock. You don't have to worry about layouts. It's just like a straight press, except it prints on, the, on both sides of the sheet. So it's a, it's a great ad, um, advantage to be doing that with packaging because board is fairly expensive materials. So anybody doing folding cartons or anything like that, sh if, you, if you really want to put ink on both sides, should absolutely be taking a look at the RP press. As a matter of fact, we just won uh, an Intertech award for the GLX RP, um, and that comes on the heels of the Intertech award we won in 2017 for the IS-29, which is a digital inkjet device. Uh, we had great success with that. The award wasn't won just because it was a clever press design. It, it, it was won because it offers a tremendous amount of advantages to a printer because of the 
automation enhancements we can do on the press um, for automatic job sequencing and inkjet numbering for serializing each sheet so you know exactly what your sheet counts are, both for good sheets and waste sheets, um, the PDF comparators, the parallel control for the automation to really condense the time. I mean, you just start bringing that all together. You add logistics to a feeder or delivery. You might even add two or three deliveries. Um, for, and, it, and each one has a function, but bringing all the Komori technology together on a very ad advantageous platform like the RP is really why we won the award. And that's why, again, I would encourage anybody that's running stock that requires ink on both sides, take a look at the RP and find out what kind of advantages it can offer you. Well, you've certainly covered a lot. Anything else our viewers should know? Well, I think one of the biggest advantages to Komori Press is really the, the financial benefits it brings to a, a company. And usually we can measure that with, with return on investment. So when you take everything I've been talking about with the efficiencies on the make ready and the reduction in waste and the replacement with labor skills, um, and you know I haven't even talked about the efficiency with energy usage on press and solvent usage and you know just everything that goes into a cost bucket really gets reduced with Komori. And the ROI at the end of that, you know, for what you invest and what you get out of that is literally unparalleled. I can't find another press that produces quite that level of ROI. So I'd say that's probably one of the biggest messages Komori has. Thank you so much, Doug. We really appreciate your time today. Well, my pleasure, Amy. Thanks for having me. Remember that you can enter questions for the Komori team using the Q&A button on the toolbar below. journey started uh, actually in the Demis Center around Chicago. We were out there to look at a, a digital device and we got truly focused on the Long Perfector. Uh, and some of the biggest advantages of the Long Perfector was the HUV uh, and all the technology that was in that press. And years ago, I told myself I would never buy another offset press in the printing uh, business and we were more focused on the digital side. But after looking at the, the Komori and the advantages um, that came with it. Our, our Komori sales rep uh, told us we would be taking two or three offset printing devices at our facility and reducing our head count. And while we were skeptical, it ended up being absolutely true. Uh, we run uh, our Long Perfector three shifts today. Uh, a lot of days I go back there and I just, I'm amazed at how um, quickly it sets up uh, the AI in the machine, the auto register, uh, and I, quite frankly, I don't know how people can compete against us in the market. Um, you know, running sheets, whether it's a 60 pound gloss text all the way up to 12 point, 14 point cover at 15,000 sheets in perfect mode. Um, and sheet number 25 is sellable uh, is a big advantage for us. Uh, we were able to uh, reduce our labor costs. Um, we have 18 salespeople that feed that thing three shifts and uh, the ROI has absolutely been phenomenal for our Last year, Komori Corporation completed the acquisition of the MBO Group. This acquisition allows Komori to market the whole process chain from printing to post-processing, as well as IoT-based cloud solutions like KP Connect and MBO's data manager in the future. To give us a perspective on this new partnership, I'm joined by Lance Martin, Vice President of Marketing and New Product Development for MBO America, and Jackie Hudman, Senior Vice President Sales and Marketing for Komori America, to provide us an update on the integration of these two companies and what it will mean for their customers and the print industry. Welcome, Jackie and Lance. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hi, That's Amy. Great. Nice to see you again. Nice you. So, Lance, first off, could you briefly tell us about MBO and your time with the company? I've been in the industry over 35 years now and uh, had a chance to join MBO uh, America in 2013. Uh, we were really advancing a, a much different model uh, for the business uh, and I was really happy to do it. It was, a, it's a, it was an exciting interview. I got a chance to fly over to Germany and see what they were doing and accepted it instantly. We were rolling out uh, a new plan because MBO has always been known for folding and, and we are synonymous with that. And customers say MBO and they say folding. And actually in the new printing industry and the new models that we're working with, we, we needed to have a, a different solution, a much bigger, broader type of a look at the market. 
uh, and that's exactly what we've created. So the new MBO, if you will, um, that was actually a slogan back in 2014, I think. But the, the model we put together is more of an integrator. It's more of a finishing solutions integrator. It's more following down Industry 4.0, where you know, we're, we're looking towards automation and complete solutions. And that's exactly what we've done. And we built four legs of the chair um, of, our, of our business plan. And, and it involves our core business, for sure, which has always been sheet-fed folding. That's, that is the core business of MBO. Uh, but uh, we added into it roll-fed finishing, uh, and oddly enough, roll-fed finishing has just blossomed with the continuous form of the inkjet market. It's really gotten big. Uh, it's actually 50% of our business now. Uh, and we added also die cutting, so it allows us to get into the packaging market. A lot of commercial print stuff is, is really a big deal for die cutting. Shapes and anything that gets the product noticed uh, by the customer is a really big advancement in finishing. It's, you know, the presses get the, the sexy ink on paper, right? That's really cool, and the glossy sheets and all that. Well, finishing gets it with shapes and, and things to touch and cards that are attached and labels and things like that. That's what's sexy about finishing. So we've really worked hard at doing that. And then the fourth leg of our chair is, is the pharmaceutical business, where H&H uh, &H is the premier um, finishing company for providing outsert, insert, PI type solutions for pharmaceutical business and a lot of the specialty companies and that's where we get some of our, our goofy things, the things that will allow us to put uh, embellishment onto sheets, uh, cards and labels and stamps and, and so on and so forth can go on those products. Uh, so that, it, it was really a fun to be involved with MBO now. That's great. So likewise, Jackie, can you tell us about your history with Komori? Sure. Well, let me start off the easy part. Um, I've been with Komori for a quarter of a century. And I started with the company um, in the digital imaging division. And I've had various positions within the company. So it's been an exciting time, actually. But I think more important about my history, I think, I really want to talk about Komori's history. Because in two years, as Mr. Kubatera explained earlier, we're going to turn 100 which that's a big deal and for a Japanese company. It's a really big deal to have 100 years um, of foundation underneath us. So what, you're, what you saw earlier from Doug today is just a little peek of what we're doing as we continue to advance the press technology and the finishing technology as well. Um, our plan is to you know, keep rolling out advancements to commemorate 100 years. So you know, you know, keep, keep listening to us for the next couple of years because you'll see exciting new developments coming from Komori. So as representatives of the two companies, what are some of the synergies between MBO and Komori? You want to take that one? You want to go first? Or? Yeah. It, go ahead. So it, it's remarkably close. Um, <clears throat> Jackie and I have been working together, quite frankly, a long time. And we were actually just touching on the commercial segment. Uh, we were working with folders and offset presses in the offset business and commercial print. Now that we're together uh, and we've really started exploring how we can work with each other, um, we, we've really put together a plan that involves all those four legs of the stool I was talking about. Every one of those business segments has the ability to use MBO finishing. Of course, there's the core part of the finishing, which is, which is folding, but we've, we've put on the folding carton die cutting package and we're, we're working in that whole packaging and heavy substrate business and the pharmaceutical folders work right into their market. They can print on that, uh, that substrate very well. So I, I just think from a, I, I guess I'm speaking only from a product standpoint. There's the whole, maybe you could expand on the, the, yeah. the aspect of the company, but, but you know, from a product standpoint, it's a really good fit. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we, there's a lot of synergy and relationship that already was there. So when Komori signed the agreement to purchase them in May of 2020, it's like, for us, it's like, okay, we just kind of formalized what was already there. Um, and both, both companies, Komori America and MBO America, really did focus on the commercial market to begin with. And we were known for the legacy of robust equipment that we could deliver to our customers. And they know that they rely, that's, that's who we're known for. But just like MBO, we're really diversifying our portfolio. So we're going into those packaging markets. We're certainly going to the inkjet market. So the, the, the synergy just doesn't start with our relationship. It really goes in the future in the product development. And the other kind of neat thing, I think, is we're both family owned. Um, the, the MBO family, um, very much involved with the business. Mr. Kamori is alive and well and still active with the business. You know, even though we're publicly traded, um, it's still 
family-based, just like MBO, and I think because of that, you know, it makes our two organizations very, very special and unique in the industry. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. So how will this new arrangement affect the printer? Well, let me start because I'm really excited about this. You know, we all talk about we want to be that solution provider. Well, now we just expanded our toolbox to, to really solve their problems. And for me personally, I've never looked at it from the finishing point of view. Everyone talks about pre-press, that's first, press, and then post-press. They call it post-press for a reason. That's not true. You really need to look at these solutions starting from the finishing and then looking you know, upstream a little bit. Now we can do that. You know, with, with MBO as a partner, we can actually start solving some problems that our customers have. And we make these presses. They are super fast. They are super efficient. And guess what we're doing? We're burying the finishing department. So now we can say, we're going we're to look at your solution in totality. So we make sure that you get that job on and off the press and through finishing and out the door. And that, that's what I think the benefit for customers will be. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, that, that's exactly right. Um, I had a customer uh, quite some time ago um, doing an interview like this. And we talked about, you know, give me some theories. What, what, what's your look at the future? And, he was, he was producing a lot in the digital world. He had a lot of offset. We had to finish almost anything he put out. We had to find some way to finish it. And he says, for you to help me, you have to learn that I want to touch it once to print it, and I want to touch it once to finish it, and then it needs to get out the door. Because my, my lead times and things like that in the new world will not let me have the old way. So it's really a comprehensive solution. You're looking at the big picture so. together. Yeah, you believe so. Yeah. Well, earlier today, we heard about what's new at Kamori. Lance, what's new at MBO? So what's new at MBO? So I, I will speak about the four legs of the chair. We, we really do have an effort in all four of those areas. And I'll be very, very brief, but I'm, I'm going to try to tell why we did what we did, which I think is more important than talking about you know, the, the machine and, and features and widgets. So why did we do what we do? Uh, and then also I'll, I'm going to pick up one business model thing that I think is, it's not new, but it's a much better plan than it ever was. And so I consider that an advancement for going into 2021 now too. Um, so we start off with commercial finishing. Uh, the biggest thing we've done, uh, well, we've enhanced some of the automated features on the folder itself. Uh, most of the time when you talk about commercial folding and sheet fed offset, you're talking about a folder. Uh, so we did enhance the folder a little bit. We've gave it a lot better features. It's got new feeder heads. The controls are better. We fixed up a few things that are allowing us to now keep up with presses going 18,000 sheets an hour. Folders can go 18,000 sheets an hour now. Uh, when you did that, like she was talking about, where you're pushing the print and killing the finishing, now the folder can move, but we're killing the material handling. You can't get it off the machine fast enough when it's a 16-page thick product and trying to handle that. So we've got a new uh, automatic stacking solution with a robot on the back end that does all that autonomously, uh, and it does it without any labor. Uh, so really, we're working towards that, that model where it's one person running multiple machines. And actually, we are, we are demonstrating that in the offset business where you know two folders is not unreasonable to have one guy running as long as it's, it's automated like, we, we, like our vision is. Uh, so the next one is the roll fed. Uh, roll fed's a big industry here. Uh, we, we rolled out some new modules to go in the line. So we have a new flood coder that'll coat aqueous uh, solutions or UV solutions. That'll give that web that snap and pop and protection that you need uh, to get pieces opened in direct mail. I mean, that's the reason that people are doing that. You, you want people to be very interested when they open their mail and, and grab it first, right? Uh, and and we also pr uh, provided a new dynamic perforating scoring unit. So you can put patterns on the, on the web and you can make it dynamic, which matches up to the digital module of print, where every piece is coming off the press is different. Uh, so we get, and we've got that going along with upgrades in the finishing line itself. Uh, we have uh, expanded all the models to be the new web width because the, the industry has moved. The 20 inch is not really 20 inch. That's what everybody talks about. A little deep, sorry. Um, but we've moved all the modules out to 23 to catch all the print product. And then automation. We are all the machinery in our roll fed finishing line has been upgraded to the new M1 controls. They will now be able to connect directly to KP Connect uh, through our data manager and walk right into, uh, which actually is the premier, but that is, that's the umbrella. That's what we're all working for is to connect 
all these customers up through KP Connect. Uh, it's going to handle. It's the data highway for everything that we're going to be doing. I believe. So, uh, die cutting. We've expanded. We now introduced a folding carton solution. Uh, it's going to be building folding cartons much more traditional, the way that uh, people are used to seeing folding cartons done. Uh, it's a two-stage cutter where we can score and emboss and embellish in one, and we can cut in the next. Uh, and then we. We've expanded the cutting line to go out to 23 also. We have a new die cutter that can go out to 23 inches. And then we've built a whole bunch of deliveries because one of the problems in die cutting is you can produce it, but you can't get it off the back end without having four people standing there piling it off onto a cart. So we've made a lot of effort in building solutions that will uh, automatically produce stacks and bundles and things that you're doing. So for example, we have a new deck maker for gaming business. So now we can take gaming cards, playing cards, uh, you can make an entire deck in one stroke and the machine stacks it up, puts it on, and it can pass it off to a cellophane wrapper and give you what you're used to seeing in the casinos. And in the pharma business, probably some of the most revolutionary automation that is, is now being introduced by H&H. &H. This year we came out with a line called the M9. It involves uh, automation of the, of the process to make ready a pharma folder. We launched an automated line that sets it up, it's, uh, sets it up automatically. Uh, and the reason that's such a big deal is those machines could literally take anywhere from four to 12 hours to set up. So in this world, you can imagine, right? There's, there's really not a, um, there's not a business model for the future where you have a long make ready time and, and, and just, you, you don't worry about meeting that deadline. Uh, and a day and a half or a day to make ready a machine is just not really going to be acceptable. It, it, it's being done on the legacy equipment now, but it won't be able to be done in the future. I mean, it's similar to having the presses run almost autonomously where a person's, I mean, you're literally walking away from the press right. now, right? right? I mean, you don't need the guy standing there to watch the press run. Well, we're trying to develop that too. That's our goal. Uh, we now we're automating the parallel unit of these folders in seven minutes, uh, and that's down from hours. And the last piece um, is our business model. Uh, we have seen that the customers need fast solutions, right? It, it's not just okay to provide the solution, you have to get it to them quickly because the world for them is changing much faster than it ever was. So we have really worked hard on coming up with what we are calling industry-specific solutions for folders and mostly for folders and roll-fed this fits. And we are stocking now systems in our building in Marlton, New Jersey. So now when people call up and want to do um, the most in-demand type of solutions, we can usually ship those in a matter of a couple of weeks rather than three, four, five months. Uh, and I think that's kind of revolutionary for, for where we're going to be going in this industry. You know, we, the problems of this industry are all centered around labor and turn time and people and attrition and training and, you know, and getting the solutions for the customer to make money right away makes their ROI look really, really good. So, so that's kind of a long-winded answer, but I'm uh, still here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, sorry. I mean, no, it's great. Job. That's great. that's that's yeah. a big overview of what we're doing. Since we've become an innovator, we can take those modules and upgrade a lot of things, and it it gives us a. I mean, we're just making the product line grow and grow and grow and grow, right? You don't have to go back and change some of the old ones. You're just adding on new ones. So. Well, thanks for encapsulating yes. all that for us. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. So now, moving forward together, where do you see the opportunities for Komori and MBO? Well, let me, let me start, because I want to come off what you just said, because I, that, was, that was really impactful, and I, I think I learned something new, good. which is good. <laughs> but crazy. what made me think the future for us is kind of like what he just talked about. It's that integration. You know, we talked about the synergies between our two companies, but we also have strengths and, and weaknesses that are different. So leveraging their strengths to help us be stronger in some areas. And I'll take uh, digital web finishing you mentioned. That's 50% of your business right now. That will generate new products for us because of what they can finish will just drive new technology to different areas. So I think that um, that absolutely is in the future. And, and I will also tag along what you said about KP Connect. You heard a little bit about it today with Doug, but KP Connect is really what powers the streamlined workflow. 
and it's going to power that level of integration so you could have a seamless workflow, less, less touch points, which you, yeah. which you talked about, which is absolutely essential for the, the future success for our customers. So integration and then future uh, R&D technology that pulls out the strengths from both companies. How about you? Yeah, I, th I think that, that integration piece is, is really important. You know, if, if we need digital information or new information on the sheet, we can actually go work right from the press. We don't have to, we don't have to just sort of say, well, you need to do that, right? We can actually design it in as part of our systems. I think that will come. It absolutely will come. There's no reason it won't. And, and up until that point in time, the customer had to do that himself, right? He's responsible. If he's got a product to get out the door, he's got to look and figure out, okay, who can do this part and who can do this part and who can do this part. Now they're truly going to be coming to a, to a, a, a business that can do it all. So we're, we're going to continue to get better and bigger and have more solutions on the back end, and, and I'm looking really, really looking forward to it. The future looks bright in 2021 and beyond. It really does. We're very excited. Love to hear it. Well, thank you so much, Jackie and Lance, for your time today. Really appreciate your insights. Thanks for asking the questions. It's great. Yeah, we appreciate it. Kamori has been great as a partner. Uh, we work with Doug and as well as so many others. Uh, we, we love to treat our vendors as we love to be treated ourselves. And we've created a relationship. Where we love to push the limits. So part of our, our company's um, culture is to be innovative. And so we're, we're we're looking at opportunities and learning and it's like what what all what what can we do with the press and then we're we're pushing them as far as we can and trying to learn and through that learning process it's it's kind of back and forth of working together trying different um, trying different coatings and different finishes um, and then trying to push the limits for our customers and so by doing that Kamori's been great to be right there next to us and help us get to where we need to so we can still kind of be a, a leader in our industry and help our customers be a leader in, the, in their industries as well. To wrap things up, I'm pleased to introduce Mark Milborn, Executive Vice President, Service and Sales for Komori America. But stay tuned because after Mark's brief presentation, I will be providing you the all important question that can win you a $100 gift card and a Komori shirt. Now here's Mark Milborn. Thanks Amy. We've covered a lot of ground during this virtual webinar. And if there's one takeaway, I hope you see that Komori is on the move. As you saw today, we have new technology and new products that are truly advancing the state of the printing industry. I will echo Mr. Kubatera's sentiment, our company is focused on the future. To say 2020 brought many challenges certainly is the understatement, but with those challenges came opportunities. Speaking for Komori, this past year made us stronger. We have adopted new methods and technologies to support and communicate more effectively, both internally and externally and proper safety protocols have been implemented to keep our customers and employees safe and out of harm's way. 2020 is now behind us, but before we officially say goodbye, I want to highlight some of Komori's successes. Last year, we saw a dramatic increase in packaging press sales. In fact, more than half of our press orders were to packaging printers throughout North America. This focus on packaging was also evident in winning the prestigious 2020 Intertech Award for our GLX 40RP, a truly one-of-a-kind packaging press that delivers versatility and an ROI unmatched in the industry. Komori also had our share of success in the commercial market as well. We hit the Quinfecta with our GL840 Perfector, and even better, we extended our market share as four of the five orders were from first-time Komori users. In May of 2020, Komori made the bold move to purchase MBO. Again, just another testament to Komori's strong market position and our vision to advance print technology. As you heard from Lance and Jackie, we are making tremendous progress in integrating our technology and our companies to provide streamlined workflow for the entire press room. Our digital technology has also advanced. Our aim in 2021 is to continue our field tests on the Imprimia NS40 with the first unit shipping to the States later this year. By the end of the year, the NS40 will be put into actual operation and we will begin official sales and mass production this year. We have also advanced our B2 UV inkjet solution, the IS-29, to the next generation of groundbreaking inkjet technology. 
the IS-29S, which provides even greater uptime and productivity. As you can see, Komori remains busy with new installations as well as new products and services. We will also remain humbled by the trust given to us by our customers. As our company marches to our 100th year in 2023, we recognize that this major milestone would have never been reached without our customers, their vision, their commitment to print, and their faith in Komori that we will never take for granted. I'm looking forward to talking and seeing you very soon. Now I will turn it back over to Amy so she can wrap up the day. Thank you, Mark. A lot to look forward to. Now it's time for that prize we've been talking about. Drum roll, please. The first five people who provide the correct answer to this question will receive the gift card and the Komori shirt. In 2020, Komori won the Printing Alliance Intertech Award for the GLX40 Reverse Printing Press. What Komori product won the same award in 2017? Email your answer to hstratton at komori.us and we will let you know if you are a winner. Good luck. The other uh, misnomer that all my friends talk about, the other business owners I um, talk to in the printing uh, business is that, how do you survive with just one press? Uh, what happens if the press breaks? And the support that Komori offers uh, the uh, customers on the long for factors in a Komori device is phenomenal. We've, we've been running three shifts for two years now. Uh, we've been down for eight hours. Uh, and the problem was just a small $6 valve that was sent in uh, the very next day and we were up and running. Thank you so much for joining us today. As we begin a new and better year, remember that Komori, as always, will stay connected to you, our customers. Thank you.